I don't know if you want to get more into these kinds of research efforts at the intersection of AI and climate technology or AI and augmented reality, maybe the AI and climate technology first. Yeah, so I already mentioned uh, uh, sort of this Open Catalyst yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. project a little bit. I'm mentioning that project because it's been quite visible sort of externally. Uh, so we've released uh, a lot of data sets that are used by the academic community, not just in AI, but also in, in computational chemistry um, that have been really helpful uh, there in terms of um, in terms of understanding like how these um, how different catalysts uh, behave. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the underlying idea is that if you have a um, if you have a, um, a catalyst, what you can do is you can basically simulate the chemical reaction um, using a method called DFT. Um, this works great. It's just very computationally intensive. So it can take like, you know, many days to simulate one, uh, one reaction. And now if you have to choose from like millions or even billions of, um, of possible sort of candidate catalysts, right? There's just no way, um, that you can run all those, all those simulations in a reasonable time. Mm -hmm. And, and so the idea is like, can we train machine learning models to predict the outcomes of those simulations right. in a much more effective way? Right. right. And sort of the way we go about this is we run those simulations on um, on a bunch of sort of examples and now we train so now we have examples right of like okay this is a catalyst and like if you if you use it in this reaction then this is the outcome of um, of that reaction and those training examples we can use to train uh, machine learning models right and in, in practice in this project we use graph neural networks um, and so now we can train up these models and now if we have a new catalyst we can make a prediction really quickly without um, without running the um, sort of the expensive com uh, chemistry, um, um, chemical simulation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, very cool. So it's DFT, is the DFT, name? yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is the expensive simulation. And then, yeah, this makes perfect sense. You, so you you develop some kind of, it's not a graph neural network mm -hmm. to, uh, to estimate uh, much more compute efficiently, yeah, the input to the output. Um, yeah, it makes so much sense, a great application of that kind of technology. And then, yeah, augmented reality technology, that is something that we associate with Meta. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's, you know, something we, we you know, closely associate. So yeah, so how, how does AI relate to, to AR? So I think in, in can be in different ways. Um, so one, I think is sort of like material design, right? Like right, right. the wearables, similar, right. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. similar problems, uh, that we're, that we're trying to apply sort of similar methods to, um, and then there, but then there are also things related to, um, uh, sort of contextual AI, right? So like how can these wearables, um, sort of understands like what it is you're you're trying to do um, and help you perform those uh, those tasks and so this is something that that Michael Abrash at, at Meta has been talking about um, has been talking about a lot um, in, in sort of like rethinking basically like how human computer interaction works in sort of the in the metaverse right like in the in the world of augmented reality um, and it seems pretty clear that. AI is going to play a big role in um, in that, and so we're we're trying to pioneer that uh, that field as well. Yeah.